Now we're back to the Sea of Wisdom. Just let me give you some, see if we get a little bit of back. This is Sea of Wisdom. From the teachings of our Rebbe, the Gon and Sadik. These are actually things that are written by down by his Talmudim. Rebbe Yitzchak Meyer Morgenstern Schlitel. This is a younger man, much younger than me, I think. Uh, he lives in Israel, I believe. He has a yeshiva there, and you know, I'm in I'm in Boca Raton, so I don't see all the things that I'm older. So let's see what he continues on to say. And he's giving us some deep insight into let me see where are we at where we're at here into Kabbalah. we're approaching rosh hashanah and remember that the world is continuing to turn and we're getting closer and closer today is the 14th day of elul and we have approximately for us a little bit more than two weeks we'll be at rosh hashanah so he explains like this in the last sphera he said that even though we understand that the shechina is with us and you could have an awareness of the fact that God is everywhere. It's a tremendous awareness to begin with. But just the awareness itself has to be used. It has to be used in order to transport us into the path of going back upwards, pulling ourselves up and out. He says the line, which in Hebrew is the word kav, it's a line of the light of, the, of infinity that sheds Hashem's infinite light into the lower worlds of Bria. I don't think sheds is the right word there. I think it means shines. Shines Hashem's infinite light into the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya. It does not actually descend lower than the world of Itzilus. What? The light never descends? There is no light. He was just talking about the light in the lower worlds. It merely shines this light from its place. It continues to shine. It doesn't actually... There, he wants to say that there's no real difference, except in perception, between the, the lower worlds, there's the worlds called Bia, Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya, and, and it's Silas. They're all connected. Just as the line does not descend, so too the light from its place, just as the line does not descend, so too the worlds themselves did not descend either. They only appear to have done so after the damaging effects of the sin of Adam and Risha. However, in the alternate future, it will be revealed that the lower worlds of Bri and Sir and Asir were always bound up with the world of Itzilas. They're bound together. There's a oneness there. That's our job, really. It's to bring that oneness back again. It's to do everything we can, the awareness of that oneness. And there was never really any fall or obscuring of Hashem's presence. This is accomplished by not gazing at the Shrina and by not focusing on his apparent descent into the place of breakage and sin. In other words, that you have a feeling, and the feeling is a real good feeling, and that you want to keep the feeling. But the fact is that you have to use the feeling. That is a feeling for Hashem. But you have to keep the feeling. You have to use it as a springboard to bring you up into the higher world, to connect you once again and to make this unity, because that's the Shema Yisrael Shem, Elkein Hashem Echad, that Echad. That's our job. Rather, one must rise up immediately out of that, that uh, of that place to the light of Hashem's presence. A person has to get out of that place to the light of the presence of Hashem is so associated with the world of its seals. The Holy Shechina constantly descends in all low places to enlighten them. In other words, the light never shall stop shining. But as we say in other Shiurim, Shiurim, and we talk about what is the meaning of the word Tikkun, like a Tikkun and Tikkun elevator kola. What does Tikkun mean? Tikkun means the minimization of the light. The light has to go through these places which are more obscured, they're, more, they're coverings, in order to be able to come to us. Hashem's presence is found everywhere. At every given moment and place, one must remember that Hashem is with him wherever they are. So, if you're in trouble right now, don't forget that. However, it is, board, it is forbidden for this thought to allow one to fall and stay stuck with their sins. But you have to change your behavior. You have to start doing stuff. Rather, this thought needs to provide him the ability to elevate himself. Get on that elevator to the world of its seals, a place of oneness with Hashem. That's the game. One must know that when he re reconnects with and remembers Hashem's ultimate reality, he's remembering this at a higher level. 
It is as though the com he is completely reborn and never sinned at all at all. However, this is all contingent in not remaining in the place of sin. So one, the physicality of this world. Let's talk about pranasa just for example. Because pranasa, if you get a good pranasa, then you have a lot of money, and then you're cool, and then you could do whatever you want. Though it completely reborn, but what we're looking for is that that doesn't really work because the, there are so many things that are going around. His words is, it is always completely reborn if you're able to move yourself beyond that level of just trying to get money, trying to get the girl, trying to get this, all the things that break us, and never sinned at all. However, this is all contingent in not remaining in that place, the place of the sin, because what we have to do sometimes leads us the wrong path. We need to find our way back. As the day of judgments draws near, this Rosh Hashanah, everyone is seized by fear and trembling of what is to come. If you have a brain, then you realize that there's always more pain out there to be digested. The Zohar teaches that when the day of judgment arrives, the Satan, the Satan, our opponent, is because remember that the world is the world is built like this. That Hashem made opposite. So if is there Kedusha, if there's going to be a Kedusha in the world, a special pathway to the Shrina that we're talking about. But there's also a block for it. The Satan launches accusations against the Jewish people. So at this time, there's all kinds of uh, of of outer coming out of nowhere sometimes, or sometimes planned, angst against the Jewish people. The Shrita, which is the Malchus, goes into a very lofty place. And when that happens, the Shrita goes to a high place, its innermost place, because high and inner are the same thing in Kabbalah, which is called Kesser. Although the innermost point within Malchus, which is called Kesser, ascends to the highest hidden places on Rosh Hashanah, nevertheless, the lower nine Sephiros, within Malchus, remain in the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya. Now, exactly what that meant, I don't know. Let me see this again. The Shrina, I have no problem, is Malchus. Because Malchus is the name. Shrina is the manifestation. Another name. Goes into a very lofty place. Its innermost place. The innermost place is called Kasser. Although the innermost point within Malchus, which is Kasser, ascends to the highest hidden places on Rosh Hashanah. It goes up to these high places. Nevertheless, the lower nine spheros, which are from Chachma down to through Malchus, the lower nine spheros within Malchus remain in the lower worlds of Bri and Sir and Asiya. In other words, they're still shining there. Even though that Malchus itself in Rosh Hashanah achieves tremendous heights of wonder. But nonetheless, the lower worlds of Bri and Sir and Asiya are still receiving that light. The Shekinah then seeks to appease Hashem and advocate on behalf of the Jewish people. In other words, look, think of it like this. Shekinah is with us, right? The Shekinah is not some lofty concept out there. The Shekinah is flesh and, well, not flesh and blood, but the Shekinah is right in our flesh and blood. That's more like it. So, and advocate on behalf of the Jewish people. She asserts that the Jewish people really want to be do true tshuva. She asserts that the Jewish people really want to do repentance. And this is the Shekhinah, which is in Etzilus, which is all of this which is in us, in our physicality, that we really do want to be one with infinity. And, and it deprives the Satan the ability to accuse the Jewish people. And she fights the, the Satan, it gets in his way. And he, she stops the accusation. The lower ninth spheres was within Malchus, Remain in the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzir, and Asir to enable us to verbally confess in the sincerest way all of our sins. Even though one must fully, one fully believes that Hashem is truly with us, even in the darkest moments, and this is his point, and in the seemingly separated worlds of Bria, Yitzir, and Asir, this knowledge must not keep us from action. What action? from fully peer feeling the pain of one's past sins and doing tshuva and coming back to oneness again. Rather, one must feel the pain of one's sins and then do tshuva. This has been the words of Rabbi 
Yitch, yitch, I can't pray, pray together. It's Itchy. Rabbi Itchy Morgan Cern, great Hasidic Rabbi. This is Baruch Fleischman. Tikkun Elevator.